came to pass that they did have their signs, yea, their secret signs, and their secret words, and this, that they might distinguish a brother who had entered into the covenant, that whatsoever wickedness his brother should do, he should not be injured by his brother, nor by those who did belong to his band, who had taken this covenant. And thus they might murder and plunder and steal and commit whoredoms and all manner of wickedness contrary to the laws of their country and also the laws of their God. And whosoever of those who belong to their band should reveal unto the world of their wickedness and their abominations should be tried, not according to the laws of their country, but according to the laws of their wickedness, which had been given by Gadianton and Kishkuman. Now behold, it is these secret oaths and covenants which Alma commanded his son should not go forth unto the world, lest they should be a means of bringing down the people unto destruction. Now behold, those secret oaths and covenants did not come forth unto Gadianton from the records which were delivered unto Helaman. But behold, they were put into the heart of Gadianton by that same being who did entice our first parents to partake of the forbidden fruit. Yea, that same being who did plot with Cain that if he would murder his brother Abel, it should not be known unto the world, and he did plot with Cain and his followers from that time forth. And also it is that same being who put it into the hearts of the people to build a tower sufficiently high that they might get to heaven. And it was that same being who led on the people who came from that tower into this land, who spread the works of darkness and abominations over all the face of the land, until he dragged the people down to an entire destruction and to an everlasting hell. Yea, it is that same being who put it into the heart of Gadianton to still carry on the work of darkness and of secret murder. And he has brought it forth from the beginning of man even down to this time. And behold, it is he who is the author of all sin. And behold, he doth carry on his works of darkness and secret murder, and doth hand down their plots and their oaths and their covenants and their plans of awful wickedness from generation to generation, according as he can get hold upon the hearts of the children of men. And now behold, he had got great hold upon the hearts of the Nephites, yea, insomuch that they had become exceedingly wicked, Yea, the more part of them had turned out of the way of righteousness, and did trample under their feet the commandments of God, and did turn unto their own ways, and did build up unto themselves idols of their gold and their silver. Why were the Nephites destroyed? As he wrote his faithful words, he said again that his people were annihilated because they loved wickedness, rejected the counsel of God, and gave themselves over to seeking wealth and corruption. This made up the deadly concoction which brought about their extinction. Had not the Lord said to them, as he says to us now, that America is a choice land and that those who live here must obey God or be swept off? And had he not kept his word to those rebellious Nephites now totally wiped out? So it is that today's archaeologists find the ruins which are the silent witnesses to the greatness that once was ancient America. In closing his record, and knowing that it would come to us, Moroni pleaded with us, the modern inhabitants of this land, to escape the kind of tragic end which had obliterated his people. This is a choice land above all other lands. Wherefore, he that doth possess it shall serve God or shall be swept off. He gave us the lesson of the annihilation of the Nephites as a case in point. He wrote similarly of the tragedy of the Jaredites. It was another case in point. Do we realize that this same kind of destruction can come upon us and for the same reason? What, what I'm saying now, I've never been given permission to go into any more detail than what I'm saying. Was it this stage? So there were other things that you saw that, that you never related in your book and cannot tell us? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the major thing that uh, I do want to say because, and I can just touch on this to say this much, uh, it's like you went about a car in a few time that I could see into the future of what would happen if we really followed his teachings and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We would quite literally go into the millennium. That was 
pistols off, and then I saw in another car that uh, ever increasing natural disasters such as earthquakes, hurricanes, things of this nature. And then finally, always watching on the United States for myself, and then, because again, you must remember this was prior to Hiroshima and Madagascar, uh, I saw destruction in a way that I couldn't even comprehend. And then that was closed off. And we're right back in the room. And he let me know that I was going to have to go back. Now these, let, let me clarify this if I could for a second. These were visions of the future, as it were, alternative visions of, of right. dif different things that could happen depend on how people here live. Right. Depending on whether we were willing to quite literally surrender our will, and as he so succinctly puts it in the 17th chapter, John, in his priestly prayer, Father, I pray that they may become one with me as I have been one with you. In other words, this would imply that we must totally surrender our will and try to develop a communion with him as he's developed communion with our Father God. We do not say that all of the saints will be spared and saved from the coming day of desolation. But we do say there is no promise of safety and no promise of security except for those who love the Lord and who are seeking to do all that He commands. It may be, for instance, that nothing except the power of faith and the authority of the priesthood can save individuals and congregations from the atomic holocaust that surely shall be. If one-third of the hosts of heaven were cast down to earth by the power of the priesthood, surely that same power can put at defiance the armies of nations or stay the fall of atomic bombs. At this moment I beheld a dark, shadowy being like an angel standing, or rather floating, in midair between Europe and America, dipping water out of the ocean in the hollow of each hand. He sprinkled some on America with it his right hand, and while he cast upon Europe some with his left. Immediately a dark cloud rose from each of those countries, and they joined in the mid-ocean. For a while it remained stationary, and then moved slowly westward until it enveloped America in its murky folds. Sharp flashes of lightning now gleam throughout it at intervals, and I heard the smothered groans and cries of the American people. A second time, the angel dipped from the ocean and sprinkled out as before. The dark cloud was with, then withdrawn back to the ocean, into whose heaving waves it sank from view. A third time, I heard the mysterious voice, Son of the Republic, look! and learn. I cast my eyes upon America and beheld villages, cities, and towns springing up one after another until the whole land from the Atlantic to the Pacific was dotted with them. Again I heard the mysterious voice say, Son of the Republic, the end of a century cometh. Look and learn. At this the dark shadowy angel turned his face southward and from Africa, I saw an ill omen specter approaching our land. It floated slowly over villages, towns, and cities of the inhabitants, of which presently set themselves into battle array, one against another. As I continued looking, I saw a bright angel, on whose brow rested a crown of light, on which was traced the word Union. Bearing the American flag, which he placed between the, the divided nations, and said, Remember ye are brethren. Quote, As at this the dark shadowy angel placed a trumpet to his mouth and blew three distinct blasts, and taking water from the ocean sprinkled it out upon Europe, Asia, and Africa. Then my eyes looked upon a fearful scene. From each of those countries arose thick black clouds, which soon joined into one, and throughout this mass gleamed a deep red light, by which I saw hordes of armed men who, who moving with the cloud, marched by land and sailed by sea to America.